Welcome to Exploring Smart Sensors in Their Application in Pioneering Industries. This is going to pre be presented today by Dr. Ali uh, Marzugi. Um, so he will start speaking shortly. I do have a few housekeeping things to go through just to tell you a little bit about us and what you can expect after this webinar is over. So the copies of the slide and the video recording will be sent to everyone who signed up for this webinar. So at the end, it can take up to two business days. The last time I did one of these, it was pretty quick. Um, but do please allow those two business days before you start reaching out to ask about it. Also, make sure you check your junk or spam folders. Um, to make sure that they haven't landed in there and if you have Gmail promotions folders as well. Everyone who attends live will also receive a certificate of attendance. This will be sent to you several days after this course. I will put up a QR code for you to scan, but I will also put a link up in the chat a little later on in the webinar for you to just click on to request your certificate. So you do have to request it. It's not going to be automatic. Once you've requested this, uh, someone says no audio, but everyone else is hearing me, correct? Okay, thank you for that. I'm just letting him know to check his system. Um, certificate of attendance are done manually. So we please ask that you give several business days for those to be sent out. We ask for four business days. It does occasionally take longer, so please be patient. But after four days, feel free to reach out via our live chat, via email um, with a support ticket and ask for that uh, certificate, okay? So a little bit about EIT. EIT is an engineering specialty school. So we are a college and we offer small courses, professional certificates, all the way through a doctor of engineering. We have on-campus programs for our higher education courses, and then we have online for everything. So if you need online and you want to go from home, we have that. If you want to travel to Australia, we do have two campuses in Australia, one in Perth and one in Melbourne. All of our programs are industry oriented and taught by people who work in the industry. So people with experience doing the things that they are teaching. Um, we are fully accredited and we have remote labs and virtual labs, uh, high tech stuff to allow you to attend from home without having to travel somewhere for labs. I will now hand over to Dr. Marzugi for him to just take us through his course. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you, thank you everyone for joining this um, webinar. I hope this webinar is useful for all of you. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have camera ready, so um, I'm so sorry, but I hope you can hear me uh, clear and um, loud. So, um, as you can see here, I'm um, Ali Marzouri and I'm working in EIT uh, since 2019. Before that, I used to work in um, different industries, and I'm uh, now working in uh, industry in Australia as well. So, um, as well as working in academic area. So, I don't go through my resume too much, so you can see that later on. Uh, but in this session, we are going to talk about the sensors. Um, so, I'm happy. If you have any question, please um, write down your question to uh, make sure that you don't forget it and ask the question at the end of the session that you that we have at the time for uh, Q and A because I don't want to interrupt the session. Um, actually, there are too many of you, and um, answering all the questions or communication with all of you takes lots of time. Um, 
but I'm happy um, to answer as much uh, as your question at the end of the session. Um, and then another thing is um, during the session, I ask you some questions so you can use chat box to um, leave your answers um, for me um, if there is any question. Um, so as you can see, the agenda of this um, webinar um, is an introduction and then um, introduction about the sensors. But the main purpose is talking about the smart sensors, with, which is um, so far is the latest generation of the sensors. So um, then we are talking about standards, uh, a little bit just touching that integrated smart sensors, what are the in integrated smart sensors? Um, and uh, the pr process of the evolution of the sensors and application of the sensors. And at the end, definitely we have some um, question and answers. Um, first of all, we start with uh, um, the industrial revolution stages. Um, um, I guess most of you are familiar with these stages, but I try to explain it because this is highly relevant to the sensors and to our topic today. So the revolution in industry started with um, invention of steam and harnessing the water and steam for providing the mechanical power. So what has been done as human body, what we are going to do is we try to extend uh, our capabilities. We want to push the boundaries always, always and always. And um, in industry, it has happened by extending uh, the mechanical path. So invented um, the steam engine, combustion engine, is the starting point of um, industrial revolution, which we call it as a mechanization, and then um, followed by electrification, which is invention of electricity. So a combination of mechanics and electricity results in mass production, results in um, availability of um, production lines, assembly lines, so we have mass production but this mass production and uh, um, like uh, manufacturing mass production manufacturing and assembly lines was not smart just worked based on human body orders so after a while it, it was highly dependent on human body actually but in 1970, the automation has been started. The automation has been started by invention of electronics and combination of electronics by telecommunication. It means that we could transfer signals, electronic signals from some point to another point. And then computers helped us to send the command, receive the output and monitor the, the process of uh, the manufacturing. So automation has started by early stage robots. But what we are now exactly, we are in fourth generation, we are in industry four stage, which is digital, digitalization. So digitalization get advantage of a cyber physical systems. It means that We've been able to transfer data, not just with the cables, but through something which is not visible and we call it as wireless communication. On the other hand, our systems, our robots, got some brain. So we added some brain to them. They could make decision, they could control, they they can control the, the procedure of the system. They can control the process. In some special cases, they can make decision by themselves, but under supervision of the human body. This is very important. 
So we are now in industrial uh, industry four stage, but in industry four stage, robots are working um, like comprehensively. So then we can see robots everywhere. We can see autopilot system everywhere, but they are under control of human body. Actually, I can confidently say that they are under fully control of human body. Even if they make decision in some special cases by themselves autonomously, but at the end of the spectrum, human should have a look at them. Human should look after them. So they are not fully independent of human body. The next stage is a fifth generation of industry. So we call it as industry five, which is supposed to be interdependence of man and machine. So we are using cognitive computing. We are using human intelligence in machines. Um, and uh, actually, it assumed that in Industry 5, human and robots work shoulder to shoulder, not one under control of the others. Um, I understand that this is some kind of um, idealization, but it will be happen in the future, as everything has happened. So why we talked about the stages of um, um, industrial revolution because this is highly dependent on one electronics or one physical component which we call it as sensors. The game. Before automation developed, we didn't need to have any sensor to transfer to gather data, collect some data from the production and uh, transfer it for monitoring purposes and uh, doing process because human body is a, a fully equipped sensor, sensored machine, which we've not um, able to um, invent anything like ourselves so far. So before um, Industry 3, everything has been controlled by human body. It means that we had some sensors. Imagine that so as, as a supervisor or operator in, in a production line, what do we have? We have an eye, so this eye uh, worked as a sensor. So while the production line runs for mass production, the signal transferred to this uh, sensor, which is our eyes, and then the signal transferred to our brain. So brain make made decision if I have to uh, push the push button start or stop, or increase the speed or decrease the speed or anything that is required. So it's been fully controlled by human body. But in Industry three, stage three of um, industrial revolution, we have um, triptych of um, mechanics, computers, and sensors. So mechanics. computers and sensors. So we call it as mechanization, informatization, and sensorization. What does it mean? It means that we had our equipment, which are mainly mechanical equipment, and these equipment are sensorized. So we used lots of sensors for detecting data which is required for controlling process and then uh, we use some uh, telecommunication protocols uh, to transfer these data from the sensor um, to the computers uh, to the software to the firmware for processing for further processing and then um, send uh, the feedback signal uh, to the system to the mechanical system 
to reduce the error to be able to control the process. So as an example, what I can show you is um, the autopilot in airplane. Airplane is a fully equipped, um, um, fully sensor equipped uh, um, equipment. Actually, has been developed by uh, has been uh, has been developed or has been invented by human body. You have lots of sensors, as you can, uh, I mean, as you know, um, in the airplane. And one of the important feature of the airplane is it can um, run under autopilot. So what do we have? In general, we have uh, lots of sensors. These sensors gathers lots of data, multiple data from environment, from um, the speed from the engine, uh, temperature, the speed uh, of the engine, um, from the temperature of the weather. So we have lots of information, and then uh, this information transfer through um, some protocols to the computers, uh, to the brain of um, the plane um, and uh, to the monitor set for the pilot. Um, but in case of the autopilot, we have uh, lots of actuators as well, which act based on the command they've received from the sensors to run the aeroplane uh, forward and um, without any danger, all right? Then from this actuator, we get a feedback signal, send it to sensors again to reduce the error. So this is a loop, a control loop, um, which all works uh, in, a, in an airplane for the airplane to be able to um, fly it um, under autopilot. But as we know, it has been invented many, many years ago. The question is, if you was that much smart to be able to run aeroplane under autopilot, why we couldn't do that in cars and it started just right now? So nowadays we have some electrical cars which can drive um, autopilot, such as Tesla cars which can drive autopilot, um, and some other cars definitely there are um, many electric cars in the market uh, that they can drive autopilot and and even uh, apart from electric cars you have um, um like engine cars which can uh, like uh, which have uh, equipment for for autopilot car park and so on so but it's been commercialized just no more than if I said 10 to 15 years, I didn't say um, wrong. So why? The question is, what was the challenge that we could run autopilot on the airplane, but we couldn't run autopilot in the cars? Any idea? So you can just um, write down your idea in chat box. So, accuracy, accuracy, so speed of feedback, obstacles, too many different variables, yes, George, for example, what variables, uh, can you tell us some, some of these too many different variables? Obstacles is, is very important, yes. The amount of data that has to be collected, that's exactly correct. So thank you so much for your, yes, thank you so much for your answers. That's correct. So we, in, compared to the aeroplane, when you want to drive a car in the street, in a crowded street, so you have huge number of data. Obstacles means you have to be careful about every piece of 
environment that uh, we are running the cars in there. So we have lots of data. So these lots of data makes a big challenge. It means that if we want to, if we wanted to in the past, if with the, with the previous um, technology, if we wanted to gather and collect it and clean and transfer all these data and process all these data, we needed a bulky system, a costly system, a very accurate system which we've not be able to um, put all together into a package. But recently, because of the electronic technology has been developed dra dramatically, uh, we have IC packages, we have um, very, very small and tiny um, electronic components. Then it's possible for us to make them integrated. So, in general, we can say that in the past, we didn't have anything which we can call it as smart sensors. We had sensors, and then we needed some machines to process these data. But nowadays, technology has been developed and smart sensors have been invented. So smart sensors have some type of a brain which make them to be able to process a huge number of data in a short in shorter time than previous. So they are not that much bulky. So we can process lots of data with different um, like variety. Uh, with different speed in um, short period. All right. So if we want to summarize the challenges, we can say that um, we had um, many physical um, objects, which um, results in lots of uh, signals um, to be processed. So the cost, the weight, the power which is required, which was required for the previous sensors, for the last generation of the sensors, communication and um, integrating all the sensors, uh, actuators and the interfacing of the sensors, the packages, all of them was the problem. All of them was the problem. But nowadays, since Industry 3, mechanization, informatization, sensorization helped us to be able to invent smart sensors. We are not going through a smart sensor so far, so we are going to talk about sensors a little bit further and then we uh, talk about smart sensors. So what you can see is <sighs> definition of the sensors. So what is the definition of the sensors and what is the difference between sensors and transducers? Anyone knows? Okay, so, okay. Okay, so I define the sensor. Sensor is a component that converts signal to signal, all right, signal to signal. But what is the difference between sensors and actuators and, and uh, transducers? Do you have any idea? Anyone has any idea? What is the difference between sensors and transducers. Yes, um 
Ishnuji is correct. No, Ali. Um, all right. So, um, okay. Thank you so much. Um, actually, as um, Bishnuji or Bishnaji, if I'm not wrong, uh, mentioned, sensors converts electrical to electrical, electrical signal to electrical signal. And transducers converts any type of physical signal to electrical signal. So this is academic definition of sensors and transducers, but honestly, it doesn't matter if you are using sensors instead of transducers, transducers instead of sensors or so on. So at the end of the spectrum, we are using lots of people in industry using sensors instead of transducers, transducers instead of sensors. So at the end of the spectrum, all of them converts one type of energy, um, signal to another type of signal. But accurately and um, academically, sensors converts electrical signal to electrical signal, while transducers converts any type of physical signals rather than electrical to electrical signals. So in this webinar, I'm talking about sensors, just sensors. If even if I want to talk about converting any other physical signal to electrical signal, I call it a sensor. So please be aware that there is a no um, big deal if you use sensors instead of all of them. All right. Okay. So what you can see is we have. Uh, different signals for example we have chemical signals we have radiant or optical signals we, we have mechanical signals or we have micro electromechanical signals for which we call it as mems we have thermal signals we have magnetic signals and lots of other signals and all of these signals are analog signals don't forget that all of these signals in the nature all of the signals are analog signals all right and then these signals to be processed has to be converted to electrical signals because in electrical signals we have opportunity to measure voltage or current so it's easy for us to convert all of them for example pressure to electrical signal uh, temperature to electrical signal or um, any chemical reactions such as smoke, such as um, fume or so on to electrical signal, um, any magnetic effect such as Hall effect to electrical signal, and then measure this electrical signal, and then translate it to some uh, understandable language for the human, for further processing, for controlling the system and device all right so what we can see is a very good table um which actually this is a matrix input output matrix of the sensor which gives you some idea how the sensor works for example if you have um, mechanical signal as input and then you get electrical signal as output. So what type of sensor could be used in this case? Could be used. There are lots of signals, lots of sensors could be used. But for example, piezoelectricity can be used, which is a type of quartz or barium titanate. So if you use uh, the lighters, uh, so some of the lighters use this um, piezoelectric material, quartz material, while the, the piezoelectric material, actually quartz, is some kind of material which is um, reacted while it's been impacted. So if you put pressure on that, then you have electricity in the output. Or if you stretch it, or if you stretch it, or if you press it in both cases you have electricity in the output so you can use it as sensor or for example we have um, thermal 
as input, thermal signal as input, and then in um, thermocouple, we are using a CVEC effect. CVEC effect gives us electrical um, output. So how does this work? So you have two different material. For example, say copper and aluminium, which is connected to each other. And if you apply a temperature to the common point, then the electron um, runs uh, through each of the material with different speed. Therefore, you have potential here. So you can measure the potential. It's not that much easy, but it's simply explained as it is. So we call it as civic effects or if you have a thermal signal input and then you need magnetic output, you can go through um, Curie Way's law. So it says magnetic susceptibility equals C over T minus TC and so on. So I'm not going through details, but this matrix give you some idea how the sensor works. So you have different types of physical um, signal and you get different types of uh, physical output out of this using different uh, sensors. There are two different types of sensors. Um, one type called as um, self-generating sensors, another type called as modulating sensors. So what is the difference between self-generating sensors and modulating sensors? Self-generating sensors, that's good, Mr. Ali, perfect. Uh, Modus or Ali, right? Yes. Modus or Ali, yeah. Yeah, definitely. While you have, um, yeah, so while you have experience in this field, so definitely you get uh, what we're talking about. Um, so sensors um, could be either self generating or we call it as passive sensors. Um, or it could be modulating type, or we call it as active sensors. So in case of uh, passive sensors, for example, we can say that electrodynamic microphones, electrodynamic microphones is a type of microphone which works based on the sound which is applied as input and then the coil will be pressurized uh, or vibrating and then electricity will be produced so electricity electricity signal will be produced so uh, this type of sensor doesn't have any external power supply so it gets its energy from input signal input signal could could be either sound signal such as what um I gave you as, as an example or any other type of signal. So we call it as passive. But in case of active sensor or modulating sensor, we have a power source as well. So it means that, for example, if we have a condenser microphone, we have um, input signal, but we should have some power source to generate this sensor. So, um, um, so we call it as um, active signal. All right. There, uh, then um, at the end of the spectrum, we have um, some uh, control loop for controlling um, the process um, and reducing the error of the sensors. Another topic that we are going to talk about that is the material which we are using in the sensors. We, there are different materials uh, which we are using in the sensors and it's been developed and developed and developed um, since we are going forward because uh, nowadays we are in uh, nanomaterial area. So there are lots of sensors which are uh, very tiny and small and for very highly accurate and special purposes has been developed. But in general, um, 
the material which is used in in um, sensors uh, is highly depend on um, the signal that we want to measure um, and control. For example, we have in general we have um, mechanical signal, we have um, um, optical signal, we have um, electrical signal, and so on. And for each of them, we have to make sure which material is um, appropriate that's great that's great so these are general um, form of uh, material for example semiconductor material we have photovoltaic and photoconductive material photovoltaic uh, material which uh, produces voltage out of light and photoconductive material which converts light to current for example or as we mentioned As we mentioned, we have um, um, some other uh, elements such as uh, barium um, as piezoelectric signals, piezoelectric signals, which has been um, 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 which has been impacted by um, pressure. So while you stretch this material or while you press this material, it gives you a voltage with um, different polarity. Um, other sensors, uh, such as uh, optical sensors, uh, which you have an opaque vein. Um, just let me draw this one. And you have a receiver. And you have a receiver and you have transmitter of light. So the interesting thing that I want to talk about that is, apart from using um, apart from using different types of material, sensors can be used for different type of signals. For example, optical signal can be used directly for controlling, for example, the speed of um, a lift in a device, or can be used, can be combined with other type of sensors and use uh, for measuring the pressure for example you have an opaque vein and then you apply the pressure this opaque vein moves up and down and then the amount of light which has been received by the transmitter is changed and then you get different values so this is the different um uh, type of sensor that you can combine them you can combine different material such as thin film and semiconductor um or foil and ceramic to make um, your special type of sense. Then the parameters for choosing this, for selecting the sensor or for fabricating the sensor is very important. What parameters is important to be measured? We have General parameters such as mechanical parameters, such as thermal parameters, optical parameters, um, magnetic parameters, acoustic parameters, uh, or sound parameters. We have electrical parameters, and all of them has some sub subcategories. For example, if you are working in uh, power power production, you are um, dealing with uh, wind turbines, and in wind turbines, you have to be able to control the pitch in the um, wind turbine so pitch is some kind of mechanical parameter so you, what you have to control you have to control degree of rotation of this so you are facing you are dealing with a mechanical parameter of a solid so you are talking about um, mass, for example, of a solid. You are talking about a torque or tension which applies uh, to a material. For example, if you are going to um, control the speed of a centrifugal. 
So <clears throat> you are dealing with <clears throat> a mechanical parameter of a solid. Well, this mechanical parameter could be um, of a fluid. For example, you are controlling a density of a fluid. You want to control the uh, pressure or the flow of the oil, which is the flow through a 48 inches pipe or 56 inches pipe which has to be pumped from um, low head area to high head area um, so we call it as mechanical parameter of the fluid then we have thermal parameters thermal parameters is, is some kind of parameter that we are all familiar with because um, um, 99% of us um, dealing with the air conditioning system and air conditioning system um, is a very small device which can control the temperature especially the new generation of air conditioning system which are smart and they can control the temperature they can change the, the speed of the fan they can change um, I mean change the uh, duty cycle of the switching on and off of the compressor uh, to save the energy so all of these some kind of um, measurement uh, with the um, based on thermal parameters so we have optical parameters uh, which is using a lot in this um, these years uh, so for example for image processing which is very important in health industry or in other industries such as archiving industry so you have um, image you have colors this image and colors has to be detected has to be analyzed and um, has to be used for prediction or for diagnosing any problem um, nuclear radiation nuclear radiation also is another uh, important parameters um, we are using nuclear sensors nuclear based sensors actually gamma ray based sensors for measuring um, the level of um, uh, liquid or solid inside a tank um, however it's very complex and it has lots of safety procedures but it's highly accurate so you have um, um, some kind of gamma ray supply which has to be installed in 45 degrees and then you have your tank then you have your material there and then there is a detector so gamma detector so these rays will be um, exerted and then has been detected by this uh, gamma detector and the level of the um, object inside the tank will be measure for example if the if there is some um, uh, accuracy matters or or if there is something um, that you have to install the gamma uh, ray supplier outside the tank it can penetrate uh, to the wall of the tank so this is different types of material that we have to consider while we are choosing our sensors <sighs> So now we are going to slowly, slowly be close to smart sensors. So far, we've been talking about sensors. When sensor has been developed, approximately. Why sensor has been developed? Because of controlling and automation. And uh, how sensor worked in combination of other elements so we talked about mechanization um, computers and uh, or informatization and um, sensorization so we talked about all of them we talked about sensors itself watch what parameters impacted on sensors sensor selection but now we want to see if we combine all these components in a pack what we get definitely 
we get a smart sensor. What are these components? We have sensor. These sensors detect analog signals because we mentioned that every signal in the nature is a type of analog. So we have analog signals and every type every type of signals in the nature is a type of analog. So these analog signal should be detected by our sensor. Then because we have computers or processors, or ICs, or processors, or uh, microcontrollers, they are working based on digital signals, so it has to convert it. So we need A to Ds. So it has to convert it to digital signal. Digital signal has to be has to transfer to um, our processors, our controllers for controlling purposes, for amplification, for any other electronic process that has to be done on, on a signal. And then we have to be able to read uh, the output. So this output could be either remain as digital signal and we read, or sometimes we need to convert it to analog again. So we need another D2A in some special cases to be able to read it. But, um, I divided it into three stages and I call it as hybrid smart sensors. So hybrid smart sensors, um, they are different in degrees. For example, we have sensor itself encapsulated and then it's been connected to analog digital and bus so a to d and bus and then output will be transferred to the bus all right so this is um universal sensor interface but in second stage what you can see is in second stage what you can see is we have sensors and analog signal as a package and then it's been converted to digital, digital, and bus signal is in another package. And then in a third, um, in the third one or in the third hybrid system, uh, we have the sensor which is combined with interface circuit um, hole in one chip which provides duty cycle or provides the bit stream for you. And um, um, by the way, in this case, we need the bus to be separate as well. All right. Um, there are some standards uh, for the sensors uh, signal. Um, we have analog voltage, analog current. It could be either 0 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts, or we call it as 0, 0.5, 0 to 5 volts, or we call it as, uh, oh, sorry, or we call it as 0, 0 to 5 volts or uh, more accurately 0 0.5 volts to 4.5 volts and we have analog current uh, 4 uh, to 20 milliamps which is uh, highly famous um, this is a type of serial we have frequency 2 kilohertz to 22 kilohertz we have duty cycle from 10 percent to 90 percent different bit stream bytes or um, and we have different uh, communication protocols, uh, such as I uh, squared or I squared C USB, universal serial bus protocol, or we have uh, D squared B, which is domestic digital bus, or we have any, or any type of field bus, which is very common in the industry, or we have um, control area network, and maybe you have lots of other communication protocol. This is just some kind of standards. And as you know, different countries have different type of um, protocols as well. Uh, so what we can see here is 
integrated smart sensor. So while we inter integrate all these electronic components, we have integrated smart sensor. So um, in this integrated smart sensor, we have um, um, some information such as address, such as interface, such as controller. So we have multiple sensors or we have just one sensor or um, many sensors so um, they gathered some information in uh, the new devices modern devices we have compact of multiple sensors um, uh, multiple sensors in um, one package and uh, each of them send different signals uh, for amplification and uh, for conversion so to digital the, then we have Amplification definitely is the most important part of uh, the, um, the signal processing because normally the signal that we receive from um, uh, the nature is a, a type of weak signals and it has to be amplif amplified because we need to chop that signal be because we need to quantize that signal for the purpose of digitization so we have to chop them we have to quantize them and if you have uh, one signal then uh, you need uh, multiple uh, output out of that for uh, accurate analysis so you need a multiplexer for example it goes to um analog to digital converter and um it goes to the interface for controlling purposes, monitoring purposes, and so on. So this is a general block for um, integrated smart sensor, or uh, we can categorize that in different levels. For example, in level one, you have sensor elements, just sensor element. Um, so you detect some signal, you gather information or detect some uh, information and um, your sensor based on the voltage or current that it works with, uh, transfer this signal to your uh, main processor. Or in level two, which is a basic type of integration, you have sensor and analog circuitry. Um, so you have signal and then uh, an amplifier so you amplify the signal in a package of your sensor so you get the signal which is very weak and then amplify the amplitude of the signal and transfer this signal this amplifier signal um, so you have sensor including integrated analog sensor. So in in one package, in this one you have a sensor in two package with analog circuitry. In this uh, type uh, mixing technology or level three, you have sensors in and an analog circuitry or amplification circuitry in one package. Then it could be combined with a CMOS. So with an IC, so you have a brain in your sensor package as well. You have sensor, you have analog signal, amplified analog signal, and this amplified analog signal could be digitized and uh, some further process in there. And then in fully integrated, you have radio frequency circuitry, you have um, um, decision making circuitry you can add lots of information to your sensor for example to your, to, your, to your signal for example um, you have a signal like this and then you add a tag number you add I don't know the um, calibration information and so on so all of them has been transferred with your signal so we call it as a full integration so this is the this is the um, um general concept of fully integrated smart sets so what about the technology um if we want to summarize the technologies and uh, summarize the integrated smart sensors we have technology of all right low power a low power signal has to be amplified using low power op amps or uh we and then uh, from the op amps we have integration of 
integration of um, analog digital uh, um, converters. Um, then we have bus system for transferring data. And um, the most important thing, the most important thing in smart sensors is capability of self-testing and auto calibration capability of self-testing and auto calibration is uh, two most important um, capability of the smart sensors all right um, and then for example the application it could be um, in medical or it could be scientific type of sensor or industrial or computer interface for example dna sensor for measuring the dna for example you have a blood sensor you for uh, medical purposes or for example you have um, um, variable sensors for monitoring the condition of a patient within a month and transfer data to the um, server in the hospital without um, requirement of the patient to be um, in the hospital in person. So um, they are different types of um, application um, of uh, the smart sensors. Um, <sighs> And um, we talked about calibration, uh, auto calibration. Auto calibration or self calibration um, is very important capability of smart sensors these days. Um, we have different calibration um, techniques for different types of uh, sensors. For example, you have um, if you have a sensor with um, electric output, um, so you may um, set up a reference voltage, reference voltage level in the sensor, and this sensor auto calibrate itself while the sensor will be uh, re reset. All right. For example, for load cells, uh, load cells are type of sensors which are used for purposes they are highly accurate sensors um, as an example I can see that um, this type of sensor is using for For example, for milk powder measurement, uh, for milk powder weight measurement in a tank. So you have um, um, these type, I mean, load cell sensors, and these load cell sensors um, measure the tank while it's full of um, milk powder. And when it's been empty, while the tank will be empty, um, will be empty, then um, this sensor is capable to reset itself to zero so it's auto calibrate itself so this is uh, one important um, aspect itself so this is uh, one important um, aspect or uh, capability of smart sensor another one is self-diagnosis in some kind of um, sensors they are able to um do self-diagnosis so they can um check the voltage of itself and or the current of itself and um, give you some information if i'm healthy or not um so you can see that in some kind of machines for example in some kind of um, production scanners for example this is some kind of um, experience of uh, myself so in production scanners you have um lots of sensors working in uh, this type of high-speed scanners um, while you are running uh, self-diagnosis uh, the sensor each sensor goes through uh, itself and uh, give you the information about the voltage 
So it says that, all right, my voltage is 1.2 volts, no matter if you have anything, uh, if anything has been detected by me or not, but I have this voltage, so I'm sick. Um, while another sensor says, um, as long as we don't detect anything, we are healthy and we, we show you five volts. So this is some kind of auto-diagnosis. So we can find out if the sensor is healthy or not. Um, the application of smart sensors, definitely they have lots of application. One of the application is in um, healthcare industry, which is very important in robotics which is very important and in automotive industry is very important. So um, biosensors used for human robots, um, as you can see, this uh, type of sensor has been um, developed based on actual human skin. So what do you have in human skin? In human skin, Sorry, my drawing is not that much good, but I try my best. Is that correct? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's correct. So, what do we have? We have main nerves, and then these nerves. has millions of uh, branches millions of branches in your hand all right so any point of your hand, any point of your hand has been touched. They send some signals, transfer these signals through this nerve uh, network to um, the biological neurons in your brain and it's been processed in your brain. All right. So what about the biosensors for skin, the biosensors? is a multi-layer human-like skin which allows exactly not if i say exactly i exaggerated it's not exact exact as the skin is but is highly similar to skin with high accuracy so it has a top layer which is made of a rubber-like polymer so you have a rubber-like polymer uh, which resembles this um, human skin then underneath of that um, it's been added by um, hydrogel um, this hydrogel imitate the human epiderm so we have human epiderm and it's been imitated by hydrogels so hydrogel is soft and is some kind of um, um, flexible so while you press it while it's been compressed or it's been pressed it's been deformed but it's been jiggled when bumped as well all right so it's been jiggled when bumped as well um, then we have sensors embedded underneath this hydrogel so we have different types of sensors it could be either electrodes it could be microphone which using uh, sound or it could be um, some type of a piezo material. So different types of sensor could be used in this type, but 
it could be combination of them it could be combination of electrodes and microphones um, or electrodes uh, and piezos uh, so dif different types um, um then the signal will be transferred to uh, through the network uh, to the main processor so it acts similar to um skin so if you touch this point it senses if you touch this point it senses if you touch this point it senses even if you tickle this skin it senses and transfers signals to the processor for processing which is amazing application of um, the smart sensors um, so we have um, um, application of smart sensors in cars definitely um, since 2005 uh, which we used for T sensors in a, in a normal car not luxury car definitely in normal car um, so far uh, we increased number of sensors in the cars uh, such as um, electric cars uh, like um, any uh, any type of electric car I don't want to advertise for any special type of electric car but they are highly equipped with the sensors so you have um, different of smart sensors uh, for image processing and obstacle detection such as lidar sensors or uh, radar sensors um, combination of them and then for uh, self-diagnosis of whole cars like for the motor electrical motors um, for uh, the pressure of the tires for um, like any um, usable um, device in the car um, and uh, we have smart sensors application in-house in smart homes um, so we have um, smoke detectors we have alarming system we have um, door window we have um, the lighting smart lighting and so on which um, you are aware of that um, we have industrial application um, in this case I'll give you a uh, case study uh, uh, shortly and fastly because we are running out of time so um, this case study is um, about using sensors in um, industry for a thousand two hundred ton uh, chillers uh, which um, um, uh, using a KCF technologies uh, which is wireless vibration monitoring system so it used for vibration monitoring system um so it has piezoelectric energy has been harvested for this type of uh, for this technology and the system includes six wireless accelerometer meter um accelerometers and a wireless network manager um and a software for analyzing uh, the vibration the software called as vms uh, which is run by which is developed by kcf technology so um the system transmit vibration data so any vibration data has been gathered uh, will be transferred uh, based on, I mean, in regular base schedule. For example, every five minutes um, depends on the device. Every five minutes to 12 hours um, for diagnosing any vibration or any problem in the system. So um, the sensor provides um, uh, continuous uh, amplitude monitoring of the signal um, of the detected signal in transient. So if any vibration happens, if the signal works like this, then all of the sudden you have something like that. It means you have transient, and this transient um, diagnosed as unhealthy behavior of the machine. So you have vibration. Um, so we have lots of filters um, for uh, picking the frequencies, removing the uh, harmonics, and uh, remote online remote online station for monitoring the real time status of uh, the machine. Actually, um, this uh, system, apart from um, easy monitoring, um, it uh, saves lots of cost um for uh, the maintenance as you can see in this table and um, what else do i have is uh, the last thing that we are talking about is um, um some kind of um, 
self calibration process of the sensors uh, and actuators. We call it as uh, sensors. Sensors is a combination of uh, sensors and actuators. Um, so you have sensors um, with uh, different uh, signals uh, which has been detected, and this signal has to be transferred to actuator for running the actuators. All right. Then uh, from the actuator, you get a positive signal. This is different with the controlling that you get negative signal. You get the positive signal, but correction with the negative uh, signal has been done in correction block by comparing the reference signal and existence signal. So this kind of uh, controlling called as feed forward control system and it's been transferred to re referencing uh, and it's been transferred to uh, actuator for further processing um all right guys that's the end of this um the webinar i hope uh, it was useful for you this is some um, references that you can go through if you're like and you get more information about the sensors definitely the best way to um, be familiar with the sensors and measurement is uh, joining EIT for further information. Definitely, we are talking about the sensors measurement techniques um, in details. Thank you so much, and um, thank you, Maria. It's all yours. Thank you very much for that. That was excellent. Um, we're going to do a QA in just a moment. I have posted the link for the certificate in the chat. Um, in just a second, a QR code is going to come up as well for that. But I did want to show very quickly, these are the classes that we have or the programs that we have that cover this topic. If you're interested, um, I can provide a link in the um, in the chat box as well for these all of our electrical engineering courses uh, right here. Let me just push this up here. So if you would like to attend a class with us or a program with us, those are the links to this particular topic. It's not all we cover, but it is um, for electrical en engineering, power industry, and so on. Um, give this a second to load. So this is, again, all of our upcoming courses in electrical engineering. That is what that link I just put in is for. And then we have additional webinars, the same place that you found this webinar. We have several more coming up. I think through April is what we have uh, booked out so far. So if you liked this, please join us for more. And here's the QR code. So I'm going to leave this up here for a couple of minutes so everybody can scan this. Um, in the meantime, we are going to do a Q&A. I think we'll spend about 15 minutes. And I already see questions coming up. Um, DAS asks, could you share the smart sensor platform? And this link is just the certificate link again. I like to put it up every once in a while. Yeah, um, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much for comprehensive explanation. Um, that's um, um, definitely Maria shared this um, slide for you. And if you go through the um, references, you get lots of information. Um, um, small sensors platform is not something special so if you google it you, you get lots of information but for detailed information um if you need any special uh, information about that definitely i'm more than happy you send an email to eit they forward it to me and um, i'll be keeping in touch with you um to discuss more about uh, your requirement definitely I'm, I'm more than happy to do that um, so I leave it with you and Maria to um, communicate, and then definitely I'm, I'm happy to help you as much as Absolutely. Uh, possible. Absolutely. 
Uh, yes, and just as a reminder, because I know a lot of people joined after we started, this deck, as well as the recording, will be shared out to everyone who signed up using their email. So you will receive this to your email. The certificates, the link that I put up, that QR code that I put up before, those will be sent out. We try for four business days. If you have not received that within four business days, that's when you should reach out. So today is... Um, technically Wednesday in Australia. So by next Tuesday, if you have not received it, please do reach out. Do we have any questions um, for Dr. Marzugi? Uh, thanks, Tanzil. Yes, I'll reshare the link to the certificate. There you go. Does anyone have any questions for the doctor regarding the presentation? Okay, um, Abis says he's going to contact you directly because um, it's related to his research project or proposal. No problem. Uh, no problem. Al Thank you. Aliou says, what is the difference between smart sensor and edge computing? So um, the difference is um, while we are talking about the smart sensors, Smart sensors are uh, the base part of any smart industrial platform. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if this is edge computing or it doesn't matter if you are talking about any other smart uh, type of um, component in industry. Smart sensors is the base part of each of them. Does it make sense? Um, Afnan asked this several times um, within the presentation. I'm not sure if it's in your wheelhouse, but he wanted to know what type of sensors are glucose sensors in basic form. Um, yes, please send me an email. I will let you know um, later on. I have to um, I have to get some information from you because I need some detailed specs. Um, it's not some kind of general. No problem. Yep. So give me more information through the email, then I will uh, let you know definitely. Okay. Um, Amir, the slides will be sent to you by email. Give us two business days for that. Um, Afnan wants to know what's your email, but you prefer they contact through no, con EIT, correct? Yes, yes please. Uh, contact through EIT. Definitely they will. Um, Sorry, I'm going to post the link for contacting through EIT right here. Yep. So please use this page to do the contact and mention this um, webinar in your inquiry in the box where it says inquiry. Mention the webinar and that the doctor said to reach out to him and that way we know that uh, this is the right process. You're welcome. Anything else? Oh, um, Azhar wants to know if you can share your LinkedIn. Definitely. My LinkedIn is easy. It's just search uh, Ali Marzuri in uh, Google. Google it and you'll find my LinkedIn quickly. Yes, it's true. It was the first thing that came up when I Googled him today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And the second was another presentation he did, if you're interested in more things that he's done. Anyone else? Oh, what courses do you teach at EIT? Um, I teach uh, several courses. In bachelor, I teach uh, per generation. I teach um, um, 
uh, I'm sorry, I've got confused now. So I teach uh, power, uh, um, power electronics and variable speed drives, um, measurement and instrumentation. Um, I teach the in Doctor of Engineering, Mathematical Modeling and uh, Simulation. I teach um, um, uh, like uh, mm, power electronics in uh, um, industrial application of power electronics um, and um, um, I teach rotating electrical machines. Tanzil, what program are you in at EIT? He's asked if he can take any course related to sensors. Yes, um, for the sensors, if you are in bachelor master level. Master of electrical. Oh, oh. master of electrical. Um, uh -huh. Instrumentation and measurement. Instrumentation and measurement, which has been uh, um, offered, I mean, uh, which has been um, um uh, like uh, done by me self instrumentation and measurement yes i'm going to put his name into the um chat and if you want to google him and get his links there we go maybe easier for some any book suggestions on sensors and smart yes, sensors? Yes, um, there are multiple books. Um, some of them has been uh, in the reference, uh, which is very good books. Um, and uh, there is a book called um, Sensors. Uh, just give me a second. I'll let you know exactly the author and everything. Uh, so, yeah, the, one of the best book that you can read about sensors is uh, actually smart sensors, is um, smart sensor network using AI of Industry 4. Um, which has been edited by Sumia Ranjan uh, Nayak. This is a very good book. It includes okay. uh, lots of um, information. So I just um, let me type it in there. Thank you for that. No problem. Just give me a second. I just copied and pasted. It, so it's easier. Uh, this is a very good book. Uh, ISA wants to know if you have any advice for someone who is getting ready to start a career in power electronics. He's in his final year of his bachelor degree. So, um, in power electronics, um, definitely um, the best place that you can find the work is in power industry, power generation, because in power generation you have, uh, we are dealing with uh, lots of conversion, especially in renewable energy. In renewable energy you have um, um, like photovoltaics and photovoltaics um, in um, um, like the power, uh, the point of coupling um control so you you have to be able to convert um the signal um generated by photovoltaics to um, ac signal for transmission purposes um so in this case you we have lots of inverters also we have um stack comms we have um, um, static var uh, compensators and so on so all of them dealing with uh, power electronics. So the best um, place that you can look for the job if you are good in power electronics is power industry, especially in power generation, but especially in power um, supply chain. So transmission um, and um, um, conversion. 
of uh, the renewable power to um, AC power. And there's another one also about a job. Um, Abdelmoman says, I am close to graduating from my university, Arab Academy. I am an electronics and communications department, and I got interested on this presentation. So what suitable jobs for this field? Uh, okay, so uh, this is a little bit tricky question because um, it is, the, the, the job for this field is, um, um, is a wide, but uh, you have to have some experience of, of measurement and instrumentation, definitely. Um, as I can see, um, your um, major of study is electronics and communication, um, which is related to measurement and instrumentation, definitely, but you have to get some experience of uh, measurement and instrumentation. Uh, if you get this experience, then uh, any um, manufacturing, any um, uh, like plant, like oil refinery plant, like um, petrochemical plant, um, any chemical process plant, all of them needs, uh, all of them uh, is equipped with lots of sensors and uh, uh, instrumentation and definitely um, you can get a job there by um, like as an instrument engineer um, um, working for maintenance um, purposes or uh, repair or um, working for monitoring purposes, controlling purposes and so on. Thank you for that. And last question, um, Arabi, I sent you a link. Please make, take note of the time zone when you book your call so that you know when um, somebody can call you. It may not necessarily be in your time zone in the link that I sent you. Um, all right, uh, that's it for the questions today. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Again, look for that email. Um, in the next two business days, that will be the slide, the deck that we just used for this presentation, as well as a link to access the video. I'm posting the link one more time to sign up for your certificate of attendance. Please give four business days for that. And um, after that, uh, you can contact us. So if you have not received it by the end of day next Monday, please contact us on Tuesday, okay? Thanks everyone. And I hope you have a wonderful day or evening. Thank you so much, Maria. Thank you everyone for um, bearing with me. Um for a long, long time. And sorry for uh, running out of time for a few minutes. Uh, thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Yeah, so bye.